Distinction, a Social Critique of the Judgment of Taste by Pierre Bourdieu, published in 1979, stands as a seminal work in the field of sociology that interrogates the ways in which aesthetic preferences are intertwined with social class distinctions. Bourdieu, a French sociologist, meticulously dissects the relationship between taste, cultural consumption, and social hierarchy. His thesis revolves around the concept that taste, often perceived as a natural or innate sensibility, is in fact deeply rooted in the social conditions of one's upbringing and class position. Bourdieu begins by detangling the notion of taste from any inherent aesthetic quality and instead situates it within a framework of social differentiation and stratification. He suggests that what is considered good taste is not universally applicable, independent of context, but is instead a product of the social conditions and education that an individual has experienced. He argues that these conditions have a profound impact on their inclinations, be it in art, music, food, or other spheres of cultural consumption. To systematically analyze these phenomena, Bourdieu introduces several key theoretical concepts, including habitus, capital, and field. Habitus refers to the dispositions ingrained in individuals through their social upbringing, influencing their perceptions, thoughts, and actions in a way that often seems natural or inevitable. Capital, while the word typically denotes economic resources, is expanded by Bourdieu to encompass cultural, social, and symbolic forms. Cultural capital, for instance, includes education, language, and cultural knowledge that one inherits or acquires, which can be converted into social advantage. The field is the context or arena where individuals and institutions interact, and where the struggles for distinction and the power to define taste take place. Through empirical research, primarily in the form of surveys and interviews conducted in France during the 1960s and 70s, Bourdieu collects data on the consumption patterns of different social groups. His findings reveal that there are distinctive tastes associated with the various social classes. The upper classes, endowed with ample cultural capital, tend to prefer highbrow, legitimate culture, such as classical music, abstract art, and gourmet eating. These preferences serve to distinguish them from the lower classes, whose tastes are characterized by necessity and are often dismissed as vulgar or popular. For Bourdieu, these differences in taste serve to reinforce class boundaries and legitimize the existing social order, as highbrow culture is often arbitrarily deemed superior and more valuable. Importantly, Bourdieu notes that the social class gradient of taste not only separates the upper from the lower classes, but also expresses nuances of competition and pretension within classes, notably within the factions of the middle class. Aspiring to climb the social ladder, the middle classes often emulate the tastes and practices of the upper classes, a phenomenon Borgio labels cultural goodwill. However, their lack of ease and the mechanical nature of their cultural assimilation often betray their origins and prevent them from achieving full recognition by the upper class whose effortless mastery of legitimate culture serves as yet another marker of distinction. In analyzing how tastes are formed and propagated, Bourdieu also discusses the role of educational institutions as they contribute significantly to the dissemination and reinforcement of legitimate culture. The educational system acts as a primary conduit for the transmission of cultural capital and is instrumental in consecrating certain cultural forms as superior. As individuals ascend through the academic hierarchy, they internalize these values, which in turn affects their aesthetic dispositions. Bourdieu further probes into the dynamics of social mobility, underscoring that those who manage to ascend the social ladder must negotiate their original habitus with the new one expected by their attained social position. This can result in what he calls hysteresis, a lag or tension as individuals' dispositions may not immediately adapt to their new social environment, leading to potential feelings of inauthenticity or dislocation. Mapping the intricate ways in which social status and power are negotiated through cultural practices and preferences, Bourdieu's work increasingly blurs the line between individual agency and structural imposition. He argues that the space for free choice in aesthetic matters is greatly constrained by social structuring, and what may seem like a personal, individualized taste is largely shaped by the position one occupies within social structures. 
Bourdieu also scrutinizes the role of the media and cultural institutions in shaping and perpetuating dominant tastes. These institutions, often controlled by or catering to the dominant classes, play a key role in setting and enforcing the standards of legitimate taste, which in turn reinforces the social order. Critiquing the Kantian concept of pure aesthetic, free from social influences, Bourdieu suggests that even the most disinterested appreciation of art is socially inflected and impregnated with the markers of class. Finally, Bourdieu's critique is not purely academic but contains a political dimension as well. He sees the perpetuation of class distinctions through taste as a form of symbolic violence, where the dominant culture imposes its worldview and preferences as universal and normative, effectively marginalizing alternative forms of culture and further entrenching social inequalities. By naturalizing and legitimizing these distinctions, society obfuscates the arbitrariness of the allocation of cultural value and the role of power relations in defining legitimacy and taste. In summary, distinction is a comprehensive exploration of the ways in which taste functions as a social marker, intricately tied to class position. Bourdieu's meticulous analysis demonstrates that preferences are not merely individual choices, but the outcome of complex social processes that contribute to upholding the structure of social stratification. The book urges readers to question the conventional wisdom about meritocracy and the autonomy of aesthetic judgment, revealing the deep-seated mechanisms that perpetuate social inequality through seemingly innocuous cultural practices.